Hello, it's Len from Straight Talk from the Homeland. Today, we're going to talk about a very sensitive subject. Uh, what role did Jews have uh, in supporting the uh, Turkish uh, quest to annihilate the Armenians? Of course, I know that uh, some Jews will uh, respond very negatively about any discussion, even if it's factual and call me anti-Semitic and something like that. But uh, I can assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. I visited Dachau and Auschwitz, and I've seen the horrors perpetrated against the Jewish people. But that doesn't mean to say that we should not discuss wrongdoing by the uh, Jewish people themselves, right? In 1492, the year that Christopher Columbus arrived in the Americas was the same year that the Jews were expelled from Spain following the defeat of the Moors where they found shelter in the Ottoman Empire and started a centuries-long business and political relationship with the with the Ottoman Turks. As such was the relationship uh, that the uh, Ottoman uh, Hitler, if we can call him that, Talat Pasha, the main perpetrator of the Armenian Genocide, uh, was viewed in uh, German newspapers as an outstanding leader. Why? Because of the influence of the uh, Jewish lobby uh, who had strong roots in Germany at the time and in the Ottoman Empire, uh, led by people like uh, German Alfred Nosig. The Zionist who created the General Jewish uh, Colonization Organization and the Zionist Organization, lobbying for this relationship be between the Turks and Jews to try and support the idea of the uh, Zionist homeland in Palestine. Uh, this was uh, even before the uh, infamous Balfour Declaration by the by the British. That same uh, Alfred Nosek uh, ironically met his end at the hands of the Jewish underground during World War II uh, because he was a, a Nazi sympathizer. It's very clear what sort of character that person was. At about the same time, the Soviet government uh, was being formed uh, after the uh, Russian Revolution and of the seven members of the first Politburo, uh, in, including uh, Lenin himself, who probably didn't know, four were Jewish. So it's no surprise to me that the uh, Kremlin's uh, rapprochement with uh, the Turks and uh, a decision to split what was then a sovereign Armenia, internationally recognized, by an invading uh, unrecognized Soviet uh, Union uh, and giving away Armenian lands to Turks uh, including Kars, Ararat, Nakhchivan and ultimately uh, trying to uh, cause a big problem with Nagorno-Karabakh. It's unsurprising to me coming from uh, a group of people who had a lot of Jews in their influential ranks that this would happen because it seems to me that the self-interest of Jews was always about supporting Turks uh, for their not because they're Turks but because they thought that the the Turks would ultimately support them. As I understand it, Talat Pasha wasn't that keen on, on Jews anyway so uh, I'm not sure uh, if this was a successful strategy but what it did do is it left the Armenians as victims once again of this great game of geopolitics. Of course, uh, I should mention, to be fair, that there were many Jews who were trying to support Armenians, uh, foremost of which uh, the famous U.S. ambassador uh, Henry Morgenthau Sr., uh, who did his utmost to try and raise the alarm with his uh, government and do something about it to prevent the destruction of the Armenian nation. Of course, uh, 
Franz Werfel, the author of the uh, 40 Days of Musa Dag, uh, would write later about the atrocities uh, perpetrated during the genocide to raise awareness. And the very author of the Genocide Convention, which by the way is uh, signed by both Azerbaijan and Armenia, uh, Raphael Lankin was a Polish Jew, uh, a lawyer who co first coined the word uh, genocide uh, and who explicitly mentioned the plight of the Armenians as an example of genocide. So there were many, including organizations like uh, NILI, N-I-L-I, during uh, World War I, which was a pro-British group uh, uh, against the Ottoman Turks, uh, who tried to support the Armenians during this terrible time, uh, where therefore led to the conclusion that there were both uh, pro-Armenian, or at least sympathetic to Armenian forces, and uh, against Armenians for their own self-interest parts of the Jewish community at that time. But the damage had already been done. On the 22nd of August 1939, just days before he invaded Poland, the monster called Hitler uttered the words, who after all speaks today of the annihilation of the Armenians and a clear reference to the lessons that had been learned by the, uh, the German authorities then, that uh, the world turns a blind eye to uh, such bad things happening to the Armenians and we can do the same to the Jewish people. It's a big irony, isn't it? In 2001, the Foreign Minister of Israel, Shimon Peres, however stated, we reject attempts to create similarities between the Holocaust and the Armenian allegations. Isn't that shameful to call it an allegation? Millions killed. It's an allegation. And he said this simply for his own nation's self-interest. Because at the time they were busy building relations with Azerbaijan and Turkey, and today we see the results of that with uh, Israel playing this uh, proxy war against uh, Iran using Azerbaijan as a launching base. But uh, the Armenians are the inevitable pawns when they're selling sophisticated weapons to a genocidal nation uh, like Azerbaijan. It's shameful that uh, Israel hasn't recognized the Armenian genocide. Uh, whereas many parts of the Israeli society recognize the horrors that, uh, that the Armenian people have been through. So we can only conclude that the morality of the Jewish leadership is in question. I can't see how they can uh, preach to the world about the Holocaust, about Holocaust denial, when they themselves deny the Armenian Genocide, when they themselves provide weapons to a genocidal state to commit genocide. They can't get sympathy from the world if they can be so hypocritical, so callous as to just uh, tell the world that they, these sort of things are not relevant. When we're talking about uh, millions of Armenians who have been killed in the past and tens of thousands who are under threat this very day, especially in Artsakh, which has been blockaded for over six months. So I call upon the Jewish people of conscious of morality. Please understand the suffering of your people is not unique. Please, reverse this political direction. You don't need to side with a genocidal state to uh, help you in your pathway to survival. Israel is surrounded perhaps by unfriendly forces, but then so is Armenia. And you're helping those unfriendly forces. 
I'd be very interested in comments from uh, people who uh, have an interest in this uh, area and uh, who can perhaps uh, help the discussion uh, reach the wider Jewish community so that they can hopefully put pressure on the political powers that be in uh, Israel to change course uh, because they're on the wrong side of history. Thank you for listening. This has been a difficult subject, but uh, I hope through it, through our discussion, we can bring peace to this uh, troubled world. Please like, share and subscribe. This is Len from Straight Talk from the Homeland.